Okay, so this is kind of part two of two videos where we're looking at collisions between objects. Ah, collisions is really the wrong word. Intersection. How do two objects talk to each other? How do two objects know where the other one is in relation to each other? So I have a simple example that I started with with just two objects. I update and display both of them. I check to see if they're intersecting and if they're intersecting they change color. And you can see they've kind of moved far apart from each other so they're not but I could refresh the page and randomly, they're moving randomly, you can see they start to flicker as they overlap. So what I want to do in this video is move from two objects to an array of objects. So how do you have a hundred of these on the screen all checking if they're overlapping any other object? So the first thing that I need to do, and I'm just do this all in the code, um, the first thing I need to do is change this from two separate variables to an array. So let me close this because it's like flickering like crazy. And uh, let me change this to an array called bubbles. So now I'm going to start with an empty array. Now I'm going to keep this kind of the same just for a second. And I'm going to say bubbles index uh, zero is a new bubble. And bubbles index one is a new bubble. Bubbles, I probably should have done this in advance, index zero dot update. And, and now, I want to say 0 and 1 update, 0 and 1 display. If bubble 0 intersects bubbles 1, change both of their colors. So you can see I've actually done nothing new here. Instead of just having two separate variables, I now have two spots in an array. So here you can see, great. It's still the same exact program. It's working. Now that I have an array, I could use a loop. So uh, instead of manually referencing index 0 and index 1, what I want to do is say for var i equals 0, i is less than 2, i plus plus, and make two bubble objects. And let's give them like random locations. And then here, the same thing in draw, I could have a loop that says looping all the way to bubbles.length. Yeah, I should have pre made this, but that's okay. Uh, like this, and then I update and display all of them. Now I didn't put the intersects thing in there yet, because like how am I going to do that, right? Like, okay, so first let's just see if, what this does. Okay, so there's two objects on the screen, and they're not anywhere near each other, so they're not changing color, but that's fine. If I change this to five, there's five objects on the screen. A bunch of them are overlapping, but they're not changing color, right? Because I'm only checking if zero is intersecting one. So let's think about this for a second. So let me come over here. And let's say I have this array. And what did I have? I had five. Let's just do four. I have A, B, C, and D. What do I want to check? I want to check if A is intersecting B, C, and D. Right? And actually, let's just say for a second, I want to check if A is intersecting A, B, C, and D. And then I want to check to see if B is intersecting A, B, C, or D. And then I want to check if C is intersecting A, B, C, or D. And I could go on and do D as well, and I've kind of run out of space here, but you can imagine what it is. I want to check each object. First I want to check A, and then I want to check B, and then I want to check C, and then I want to check D. And every time I check A, I want to check all the other objects. And every time I check B, I want to check all the other objects. And every check C, I C, I want to check all the objects. So how do I loop through, how do I iterate through every object with a for loop? For I goes from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. But when I get here, I also want to do another loop. So for every i loop, for every i loop. So what I need is a loop inside a loop. For every object, for every other object. Now I do want to figure out a way to eliminate a versus a, b versus b, c versus c, and we'll get to that in a moment. But let's come back and look at that, right? So here, this loop, all I want to do is update and display all the particles, bubbles, sorry, but after I do that, I need to say, let's loop again. For every bubble, update, display, and then check all the other bubbles. Now, oh boy, I did something terrible here, right? I used i twice. So i is the variable that's keeping track of this iteration, 0, 1, 2, 3. But I need another variable to keep track of the inner loop. So 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. 
zero, zero, one, two, three, zero, zero, one, two, three, zero, zero, one, two, three. It's kind of like got some like rhythm to it. So over here, what I need to do is say something like, and I could use anything I want, but I'll use J. It's kind of typical. So here what I'm saying is for every I, for every J, for every particle, check every other particle. So um, I have another picture of myself over there, which I can't look at. Okay, so now I've got this piece of code here. Now this code makes sense. I can move that into here, auto format, which is command T by the way. I think I lost a bracket, no, I've got it. And you can see there's a lot going on here, but what's going on? For every bubble, update and display. And then when I'm done, check every other bubble and check not if zero intersects one, what am I on? The outer loop is I, for every I, check every J. For every I, check every J, then change, if they're intersecting, change I and J. Now let's look at this and run this. Now no matter what, they're all just flickering, right? They're all intersecting somebody. Why are they all intersecting somebody? Because they're all intersecting themselves, right? I need to deal with the fact that for every object is gonna check every other object. I need to deal with the fact that I don't want A to check A, I don't want B to check B. There's a really easy way to do that, right? I don't wanna do any of this if I is equal to J. So as long as I is not equal to J and the bubbles are intersecting, right? So you can see that. As long as they're not the same object and they're intersecting each other, change both of their colors. So if we run this, you can see that if they're overlapping somebody, they're flickering. If they're not overlapping, they're not flickering. You know, this is kind of an awful example in the sense that design-wise, I've just got these white circles and suddenly they go crazy flickering colors when they're overlapping. So I kind of want to like leave this to you to do something perhaps a little bit more interesting here. But this, I think, is a structure that you can really play with. You've got this function that checks the relationship between these objects. What can you do based on that relationship? When they start getting closer, do they start moving faster? When they, start, when they hit each other, do they move away from each other? Or do they try to glom onto each other? Uh, when they intersect, do they make a new object that gets added to the array? So they're kind of like duplicating or mating in some sort of strange way. So there's a lot of possible things you could do there. And this is a lot to wrap your head around here, but this is kind of like a core idea of dealing with this idea of nested loops. And it will come up again in the other scenarios uh, in terms of looking at pixels on a grid or uh, every column and every row. There's a lot of times this nested loop comes up. For every object, check every other object. There's another way I'll leave you with sort of like a thought experiment, which is another way you could make this a little bit more efficient, which is that if you start with object zero, you could just count through, right? We, in fact, let me come over here and say, there's another efficiency here you could add. So this I could leave as an exercise for you. And someone will remind me in the comments, um, I'll make this solution. But if A is checking B, C, and D, right, it's actually also checking A, we've now found a way to eliminate this check. But now B is checking A, B, C, and D. We've eliminated this check, but we don't need to check B versus A anymore because we already checked A versus B. And in the terms of intersecting, if A intersects B, B also intersects A. So there's another way we could simplify this to eliminate some further checks. But that's really just a technical exercise that kind of works either way. So uh, this video um, is uh, 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 kind of at a good stopping point, I think. And hopefully you got something out of this idea. Um, the other thing to remember is, one of the interesting things about this video is I never, oh, this is good. I never ever touched the code over here. The bubble object never had to change. This is the wonderful thing about moving all of the code that really operates the object into the object itself. All I did is change the way the world works. Instead of having two single bubble objects, I made an array of objects. And the logic for how I had to check all the objects changed a lot out here, but I never ever had to change a single line of code in the object. It's constructor function of the object itself. So I think that's kind of a useful thing to note as well and something you might aspire to in terms of rewriting your code to keep these objects as like kind of robust entities that can kind of stand the test of massive code changes but they still just sort of work because they, they're, they're, they're self-sufficient. Okay, so I've got one more video that I would like to make in this objects and arrays discussion, which is looking at how to load a bunch of images. And so these bubbles, how do you display these bubbles as images um, instead of just circles, which I think 
several people had asked me about over the last week. So I'm gonna make that video uh, now, and then I'll be ready to do videos about P5DOM, although I don't think that's gonna happen today at this point. Okay, uh, and I'm hitting stop.